Hi. <laughs> Welcome. So you decided to travel down the path of minimalism. Congratulations, wise choice. Or maybe you're not actually quite sure about it yet. Still trying things out, having a dabble, giving it a go. Not quite ready to call yourself a minimalist yet. That's totally fine, no pressure. Anyway, as you're traveling down the path of minimalism, this is you, this is the path you're walking down it because this is how people walk. You may encounter a couple of um, roadblocks, people being wankers essentially, where you may find that your only option is to say out loud, I'm the minimalist, to clear them out of the way. Clear that roadblock. Now in some situations, yeah, you're right, no one gives a shit. But in other situations, it's kind of like if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, right? And you're out to dinner and you sort of just try and get the vegetarian option without being all loud and like, I'm a vegetarian. But at some point you actually have to say to somebody, oh, sorry, I can't eat that. I'm a vegan slash vegetarian. And then they're like, oh, vegetarian. They're rude, but it happens. Now, a lot of the time, it's not really gonna come up in conversation. People don't really care how much of a consumer whore you are. They've got their own shit going on, you know? They've got their own lives to lead, but Sometimes it does. So here are four scenarios where you may actually have to play your minimalist card. Here's my card. Number one, gifts. 36, well last year, last year I had 37. Now this was awkward because like people are trying to give you something and they may have put a lot of thought into it, but a lot of time they don't, but like they may have put a lot of thought into this and they're like, here's this thing I got for you. And you have to be like, oh my God, that's so nice. I don't want it. So we're gonna talk to you about how to do that a bit tactfully. So we had this situation with a work colleague recently where, and I'd only been in the job for like maybe two or three months, but me and this girl, we got, we just clicked, you know, clicked early on, it was great. She went overseas to like maybe Thailand and she came back with a bunch of key rings to give everyone. And they were penis key rings. Like they were colorful dicks on a chain. And she's like, Alex, I got you this thing from Thailand. Please take this gift. And that's exactly how she wanted it. So I had a bit of a laugh because it was quite funny. I wasn't expecting it. And I was like, that's great. Uh, thank you so much for thinking of me, um, but please feel free to give this to somebody else. She's like, what are you talking about? No, it's for you. And I was like, thank you so much for thinking about me, but I'm not gonna do anything with this. And she was like, Alex, just take it, it's a gift. And I was like, okay, like, I get that, but I don't, I don't have any need for it. And I was trying to like, nicely just say no. And she was like, Alex, just take the dick. I'm giving it to you. This dick is a present for you. We're in the back room at the time, so I'm backed into a literal corner. And I'm like, okay, like I'm gonna have to say it. Again, I really appreciate the thought, but I'm actually a minimalist. And she said, what do you mean you're a minimalist? Like, what does that mean? So I was like, okay, well, essentially, the things that I own, they either serve a practical purpose or they're something that I, I really enjoy. But those items, I don't just, by willy nilly. And she was like, oh, Alex, just, who cares? Just take it. And I had to be like, if I take this, I'm not gonna keep it. I'm gonna go home and then I'm gonna get rid of it. And you may be thinking like, don't be a dick. You should have just taken it and then like gotten rid of it to spare her feelings or whatever. And it's like, well, no. I guess it would have been different if she was like out in a market and she saw a dick key ring and she was like, oh, that's Alex right there. I'm gonna grab that dick key ring for Alex. But like she got a bag of dick key rings for most of the stuff. And she could reuse my dick key ring on a different staff member. Like I still appreciate the thought, I still appreciate her wanting to give me something, but I didn't want to waste that key ring on me when I was never going to use it. And I've got this opinion about pretty much all souvenirs. I just don't do it anymore. I reached a point where I was like, guys, I'm not gonna get you a souvenir, like don't expect anything. Please don't get anything from me. Like if someone's like, oh, I'm gonna get you something from Italy. It's like, unless there's something that you see and you think like specifically, that is Alex, he would love that. Don't, like it's totally fine. You don't need to weigh down your bag with all these souvenirs for people. I think that's so silly. Spending part of your trip, wasting time thinking, oh my God, I haven't got something for grandma or like cousin Frank. I don't know why I'm checking a watch on both hands. You know, I'm running out of time to get souvenirs for everyone. I'm like, oh my God, just don't buy things for people I don't need. Just enjoy the experience while you're in a different country. <sighs> Second, freebies. People are so weird when it comes to free shit. And I know, like, I used to be one of them. I'm on my seventh year of uni now. And at O Week, you would go to these con conventions, you would go into uni, and they'd have all these stalls set up, and there was just free shit everywhere. Like, and I'll, I'll grab all of it. I'd grab everything I possibly could. They'd give you a show bag, and I would just load that shit up. I'll go drop it back in my room, because I lived on campus, and I'd come back and get a new show bag and load it up again. Because it was free, right? I was like, I'm a poor uni student. I need some free stuff. It was so dumb because I had a drawer that was just full of like 
pens, pencils, erasers, rulers, like that makes sense so far. But then also t-shirts, frisbees, stress balls, little sachets, condoms, like all this shit filling up a drawer that I would have for the entire year, never use 97% of it, and then just get rid of it all at the end of the year. Wasteful. Even like pens and pencils, you know, there's an argument to be made for pens and pencils because they're an item that you will eventually probably use. But do you really need to take like 25 pens at the start of the year? Dumb, so wasteful, so bad for the environment, so much unnecessary plastic. But now that I'm a minimalist and my brain is less of a mess all the time, I see that taking free shit just because it's free is dumb. But it's very difficult to explain to people sometimes. They're all, take this free sample. No, thank you. Just take it. No thanks, but it's free. I don't care that it's free, I still don't want it. Just take a pamphlet, it's free. I'm like, okay. If I take that, I'm gonna walk over to that bin over there and I'm gonna put it in the bin. No, I do not want a pamphlet because then I'm just gonna have a stack of fucking papers at home that I never look at and it's gonna sit there for ages and a year later I'll look at them and I'll be like, oh, they're all expired in the bin. Number three, cheap things. Similar to free things, but not quite. Another story about work. Different job though, because before COVID happened, I had four jobs and now I have none jobs. But anyway, so I was working at a kid's party place. I know. Kids running around everywhere. And of course, here's me in like a wizard costume or a pirate costume or something. And I'm like, Alex, please smile. To be honest, I'm pretty good at face paint, but I'm not about doing the singing and the dancing and the games that the kids are all into. Anyway, we're at a staff meeting. And we're all sitting around and my boss is like, okay guys, just go to Kmart and buy yourself a cheap pair of colorful shoes. And I was like, oh God, no one else is gonna object to this. Okay, fine. And I was like, you know what? I'd really rather not do that. I have enough pairs of shoes already. I've got two pairs of runners and I've got some casual shoes. Like I don't need, I don't need more shoes. Don't worry, Alex, they're only like 10 bucks. They're super cheap. It's not really about how cheap they are. I don't really want to own more shoes when I've already got five pairs. It just seems sort of wasteful to me. It's not a waste, it's only 10 bucks. It's not about the money for me. I'd just rather not own more things than what I need to own. It's not a big deal, they're just shoes. Yeah, but then that's something else that I have to store and keep at home for like the occasional time that I'm here. I'd rather just use the shoes that I already have. Just buy the shoes. I'm a minimalist. I don't buy things unless I need them. The camera ran out of space and now I've moved down here to the chair next to my bed for the conclusion of this story. I didn't buy the shoes. So number four, not having appropriate clothes for situations. I like to travel light. Like I get a weird amount of satisfaction from packing as little as I can. For example, like this is my weekend bag. This usually has like a rolled up pair of shorts, a pair of undies, a pair of socks, and then like toothbrush and stuff and then a phone charger. And then that's my weekend bag, right? So I was in Auckland and I was like, let's jump on Tinder, see if there's any hot Kiwis around. Long story short, got asked out on a date. Not gonna go into super detail here, but went to the place, found the date. Date was looking flawless. And here I am in like plain t-shirt, jeans I've been wearing like every day and runners. Cause I only brought one pair of shoes with me. And I was sort of like, I don't want them to think that like, I haven't put in effort because I don't care. You know, most of the time I don't date. Like I'm usually just single Pringle, happy to be single. It's the ultimate minimalism, being single all the time. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. You know, most of the time I'm with my friends. My friends know about my lifestyle, my minimalist lifestyle. They don't care if I'm wearing, you know, stupid clothes. I don't put a lot of effort into fashion most of the time, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But if I was back home, I'd probably put on a pair of shoes that aren't runners, wear a pair of jeans I haven't been wearing most of the week already, and maybe do a nice jumper. <laughs> but I didn't because I didn't have any of that. I felt kind of bad that they put in a lot of effort and it kind of seemed like I hadn't, because I hadn't. <laughs> So I said something along the lines of like, I normally put in a little bit more effort than this, but I'm traveling as you know, and I like to pack really light when I travel. I just use hand luggage and I don't have another pair of shoes. So I'd normally respect you enough to look decent in public. As with most things in the world, people's general understanding of minimalism doesn't seem to go past the stereotype. So a lot of people are like, okay, you're a minimalist. You wear shoes, but you live inside. I've seen you buy things. I've seen how much you eat, Alex. You just bought a computer. 
This will be a later video, but just really quickly. Minimalism isn't about not owning anything. It's about cutting out the crap that's not really serving you. Stuff that's holding you back, making you freer. Thinking about the more important things. All that jazz. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know how your minimalism experience has gone down there. If you want to be the best damn minimalist you can be, if you want to make the most from the least, click on that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye.